und willkommen zu Tage 65. Ich bin Martin, uh, der große Kartoffelmagier. <laughs> And that's about as much German as we're actually going to get that I kind of know what I'm saying at the beginning of this. Uh, today we actually have a topic. Hooray! Uh, the camera, thanks to my own failures as, uh, as a human being <laughs> earlier on today. Uh, so, uh, we'll do the, we'll do the, you know, the usual potatoes and meat sort of thing, I guess. Uh, lunch today was this. So, you yeah, know, it's fairly nice. It's just as you go. Uh, it was, uh, that was a Sri Lankan, uh, red beet and potato curry with jasmine rice and that was absolutely delicious that was amazing uh, i did also get a a, a polo roti as well like the uh, the roti um the bread the flatbread sort of thing um all really good the restaurant is vegan friendly and what have you i'm fairly certain there was a bit of oil in it but beyond that all good so yeah that was uh, that was really tasty actually um, I did have to give up quite a bit of my rice to, uh, to Rowan as well, because, you know, he likes eating rice. Um, we then went off to see the vet and see if we could make an appointment for Dexter, because things have been going, uh, going a little bit not good for him, bless him. And then, after everything has been done, uh, tonight was board games night, so I threw together this which is a beetroot, mushroom, uh, onion, black beans, and kidney beans chili. Now, um, it sounds like a weird mixture, and it kind of is, but, you know, I, I, I just wanted something. I threw it together last minute because I had to just run out to the shop uh, and then up to, uh, up to the board games place. And, you know, my experience of things is most of the time, the shop Netto is out of salads and stuff. And I keep feeling really bad about actually just like not taking my own food. So I figured, you know, like let's let's actually do the proper thing. Let's make something, take it with us, done. So that's what I did. And it worked out pretty good. Now, where things have, oh, uh, sorry, I should also say, uh, I did have uh, did have a second beer as well. I might have a third, but if I do, then I'll, I'll hold it up here because it's one of the ones from my fridge. Um, so, the title of today's vlog is Language Fails. And it's it's something that, you know, I've, I've experienced quite a bit. Because, you know, when you're learning a new language, you make mistakes and stuff like that. Or maybe you don't quite remember the correct term or the correct words for how you want to get across exactly what it is that you're trying to say. And, you know, it, it's a thing. It happens to people. It happens to speakers of their first language. Like, you know, like you've, you've been watching my vlogs, I'm fairly certain. Like, how many times have I said something and completely boned the delivery? Quite often. I would like to say. So, uh, language fails can be amusing, as in the cases where <laughs> Sigurda kind of gets English wrong. She doesn't so much these days, but the, you know, very, very early on into our relationship, she uh, she had a few, because uh, she didn't speak English all that much to people. She knew it, but she didn't use it a great deal. Uh, so I was the uh, I was the guinea pig and helped her out with that. So there's some t some turns of phrase where, uh, you know, she, she's definitely got a Martinism, let's say. And, you know, she's very, very Americanized. So when she speaks English, she uses American terms for things. You know, it's not sweets, it's candy. It's not, you know, it's not tomatoes, it's tomatoes. It's not potatoes, it's potatoes, etc. You know? Anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, uh, so... I always found those kind of amusing and, you know, I knew that they were going to happen to me eventually whenever I learned a second language and 
you know what they do and they're hilarious so there's been there's been a fair few over the years like you know just the mispronunciation of things accidentally saying a uh, a naughty word that you didn't know in german uh you know just like uh, the, there's a very a very small difference between uh between cream and teeth so uh, and and a couple of other words that attach to those so if you're trying to ask for toothpaste in a certain way and you pronounce it wrong you ask for something a lot worse let's say um i also found out that my surname is very very close to a rude word uh, like a very a very childish rude word that doesn't get used by anyone over the age of about nine but i only learned that my surname is that after an entire year of living over here and having delivery people come up to the come up to the front door and say hi i'm looking for this person <laughs> so you know that was that was good but the reason for today's title is something that I found hilarious. Uh, I was trying to explain to the receptionist in the vets that I wanted to book an appointment for Dexter to get fixed. You know? Now, in the UK, uh, we have a euphemism for getting fixed, which is itself a euphemism. Um, uh, for males, we call it getting the snip. Because, as I'm sure you are aware, it involves inserting scissors and snipping tubes. Now, <laughs> my German fail, my language fail today, was assuming that that little euphemism would be very much the same over here in Germany. Because it's exactly the same procedure, you know, like when a human goes off and gets it done <laughs> it's called the snip when you take an animal in for it being done it's called the snip uh so my uh, my my very very awful german that i'm fairly certain every single german viewer uh friend of mine who is german or who speaks german that watches this or has caught any of this or indeed anyone who just has a passing knowledge is going to be horrified by my pronunciation and what I was trying to say. So, uh, I went into the uh, into the vets and I started out by saying, uh, you know, hello, uh, my name is Martin. Uh, tut mir leid, mein Deutsch ist sehr, sehr schlecht. I, I'm going to put translations up for all of this, don't worry. And... The, uh, the, you know, the lady, the receptionist, said, No, nah, alles gut. Uh, you know, thank you in Hilfen. Which is, uh, you know, everything's good. What can I do for you? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just moving stuff around on the, uh, on the worktop here. I shouldn't be. It's terrible, terrible sound discipline. Anyway, uh, so I said, Ah, uh, ich möchte ein Termine für mein Katze, Dexter. Uh, I, I'm Termina for <laughs> Ketze Klöten Geschnitten. Now, I, I, those three words, Ketze Klöten Geschnitten, I've put up in German. What I think is the German for that. Uh, I was reliably informed after about five seconds of a very confused look from the receptionist. Oh, ich weiß, which is I know. Those three words in my awful pronunciation, in my awful way of thinking about German currently, is the closest I could get to the English euphemism. So, Ketze Klöten geschnitten, or Ketze Klöten geschnitten, whichever way round it is on the screen. <laughs> Those three words, step by step, are cat testicles slice. Cat testicle slice or cat testicle snip. You see where I was coming from, right? Like, it's not, it's not out of the realm of possibility that you understood what I was asking for. I was reliably informed by the, uh, by the, the, it turns out, completely, perfectly multilingual English and German speaking receptionist that actually the word I should have used was, say it with me now, Castration. 
Yeah, just a, a slightly German way of saying castration. So yeah, that got me laughed at by Seguta for around about 10 minutes and it got me, uh, got me a couple of smiles from people in the vet <laughs> and, the, uh, and the receptionist, but you know, we live and learn. We live and learn. Uh, so I'm not gonna forget that one anytime soon, thankfully. But this is, this is kind of how like, language learning goes. You try something, you fail miserably, and you try again. You know, I'm absolutely 100% positive my intro to this video is completely wrong. But, you know, you know. Uh, right, so anything else that happened today? Uh, we got a bit of a lead on a Kita, so like a kindergarten that we can put Ron into. It's not definite, it's only a possible. But if we do get that, if we do get it, that means that all of a sudden, during the daytime, I can start going off and learning German at an integrations course, which means that essentially around about the same hours as a full-time job would be, that's me sitting in a classroom learning German. And that's gonna be a big help because if you're on one of those courses, you have no choice but to learn quickly because yeah, like you're studying it day after day after day after day. If you're studying something eight, nine hours a day, every single day for a week, you're gonna remember some of what you covered, you know? And I, I already know like little bits. I know basics and I know some vocabulary and some grammar and stuff like that. So hopefully I'll be able to pick up quite quickly and move on from my A0, which I currently am because we use a, a, a weird grading system over here. If I can move on from a0 up until a B2. B2 is perfectly acceptable. It's a little bit stilted, it's a little bit uh, word, uh, phrase, uh, uh, you know, but you can understand what someone's saying to you and you can craft your response and say it. Now, if I can get to that level, that means that I can go out and get a job pretty much anywhere. And just my exposure to German speakers and people on a day-to-day -day basis will help bump that up from a B2 up until, you know, like a C1, a C2 sort of level. Uh, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully that means that I'll, uh, I'll learn German very, very swiftly and, uh, you know, integrate a little bit more, which is definitely something that I want to do and something that I think everyone should do. If you move to a different country, why not, you know? At least the amount of people that whine about it when someone emigrates or immigrates into Britain and uh, the amount of people that complain about how, oh, no one's speaking English, this is terrible. But most of the time, the people who've immigrated actually speak better English and know the rules much more than people who've grown up there and live there, you know? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It's a thing that I need to do. And then once I've got my hands around German, at least to an extent, then uh, I think I'm gonna go for Italian. What else? What else? Anything else? Yeah, my glasses keep falling off. My glasses keep falling off. And I, I'm not entirely sure whether it's just to do with the heat um, or whether or not it's because my head has shrunk by the, the millimeter or two millimeters required to actually just start, you know, not fitting anymore. So, yeah, no, I guess we'll see. Right, uh, I'm gonna go and yeah, I'm just gonna pop off, get all this edited and whatnot. And I will speak to you all again tomorrow. Hopefully a little more coherent and hopefully a little less manic. Um, yeah, come back for day 66. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye.